keeper. Discount rates, which inherently are an adjustment for present value, are also adjusted for default risk. An overly simple example, we have a cash flow times a probability of 1 minus the probability of default at a current discount rate should equal the observed cash flow without the observed default risk uh, divided by its discounted yield reflecting that risk. And if we solve through, x being here the probability of default, we find that it equals approximately the amount of the yield associated with the riskier investment minus the yield of a safe investment. Now at higher differentials the denominator which we previously neglected probably should be included for a more accurate analysis. And this previous example uh, starts with two observable rates in the real world and infers a probability of default. This second example, which suffers from a equal critique that I have regarded all cash flows as being equally likely to default regardless of magnitude or when they occur. But be that as it may, we still could uh, take the same uh, setup and uh, in this case solve for the risk adjusted discount rate where in uh, low amounts we would just merely add the probability of default to that of a triple A rated uh, discount rate if you like. And if it does become more profound we would instead divide by the denominator which would be 1 minus the probability of default. So if the probability of default were 50 percent we would also when we're all said and done have to divide by 1 minus that half doubling again that risk premium adjustment. This becomes particularly clear or muddled depending on your perspective if we uh, look at say a lease versus a purchase in the context of a profitable business and then again if it's in a mandatory requirement where there is no profits being generated. Uh, well let's see the business generates revenues has a cost of a purchase or a lease subtracted and is subject to an appropriate uh, discount rate and uh, let's see uh, purchases generally are um, riskier in terms of technology uh, business risks, uh, you know, the ups and downs of just uh, whether the market does the thing you thought it would do. And something I like to point out is in between, you know, the technology didn't change and your size of the market didn't change, but you might need a new change of style for a machine which, let's say, now this year makes patent leather instead of leather or instead of plastic or cloth or wool. And um, it's a nice little uh, touch between technology and business risk. This is another one, interest rate risk. And contemplate, if you will, that a uh, purchase has positive cash flows, like the revenue stream. Now, those are associated with the tax shield from savings on taxes, which is a positive cash flow, and a possible positive salvage value if you purchased it. Contrast that to a lease, which is nothing but negative cash flows. So when interest rates change, the purchase moves in the same direction as the revenue of the business, giving it a double whammy, whereas the lease moves in present value terms opposite from the revenue of the business, difference in sign, so the lease has a smaller interest rate risk. Well, this leads to something that I find very few books address, but I find, and most students find, is pretty darn important. If you're risk adjusting positive cash flows and they're riskier, you increase the discount rate and that makes sense. But if you're risk adjusting negative only cash flows, a mandatory project let's say, then you risk adjust the riskier project by lowering the discount rate which has the effect of making the cost of the less attractive one more expensive. Let's look at an example. Let's say the business generates uh, $210 in the front end of the business. A purchase would have a present value of uh, 95 That's the cost, the initial outlay, which after then usually is not uh, subject to any present value adjustments given the separation theorem, which we've looked at previously. And the uh, lease costs a little bit more, 100 
and we risk adjust these the riskier purchase as uh, risk adjusted 15 percent and uh, the uh, lease is at 10 uh, percent and sure enough these are consistent in terms of inequality and in this stylized example I will note that uh, we have not taken into account that uh, these various cash flows can be differentially discounted. Uh, the salvage value and the purchase, for example, would probably be very risky. Uh, the uh, depreciation uh, tax credits uh, probably would be very low in risk. Uh, whether the lease is opened or closed, meaning a closed-in lease would be less risky, and so on. And also note that we, in the uh, revenue generating example on top, uh, risk adjusted the uh, discount rate upward by 5 percentage points. And in the lower one, we risk adjusted it downward to maintain a risk adjusted equilibrium price equivalence of 5.5%. Uh, and I suspect part of that is due to the fact that uh, here we are no longer including the revenue streams, which if one studies it assiduously, would actually provide different discount rates associated with different magnitudes of revenue. And I suspect that's still okay. Dr. C. Invests.